The commercial clam fishery of the town is carried on at Monomoy. A good clammer can obtain five or six bushels per tide from these flats. Dr. David Belding, 1907, a report on the mollusk fisheries of Massachusetts. This is Chatham, Cape Cod, a New England fishing village surrounded on three sides by ocean. Her shores are shaped daily by the unceasing currents and waves of the Atlantic. And just as this land is characterized by this, so in fact are the people who live here. These are a people whose way of life depends in a very real way upon the continuance of this intimate relationship. The story of this relationship begins here. This is Monomoy, an eight mile long spit of sand on the southern end of Chatham. It is here that Chatham's love affair with the ocean is most evident. The shell fishermen of Chatham have followed the rhythm of the tides here for centuries a heritage that stretches back thousands of years to the Native Americans, and one that is nurtured on a daily basis today, quite deliberately and quite consciously, as a legacy for future generations. From the first dated records in 1656, we know that the people of Chatham have inhabited Monomoy just as actively as the wildlife here. The village here had a schoolhouse. People commuted to and fro, sometimes by boat, sometimes by land. It was a place of commerce, of recreation, a place at the heart of Chatham's identity at the center of her imagination. And one constant was shell fishing, which continued undiminished over the years. Whether Monomoy's form was capriciously carved by the Atlantic or by government. As in 1944, when the federal government acquired the island and established a wildlife refuge. Or in 1970, when Monomoy was designated a wilderness by an act of Congress. There is some talk today that federal regulations may now threaten this enduring heritage. And for the first time, the future of shellfishing here is uncertain. Started shellfishing at probably age 12, part-time after school weekend. It was going with my father and helping him, you know, helping him call the scallops and we, you know, he would go down cohog and we would sit in the boat and, you know, we'd get out and scratch a few cohogs and play on the beach and bring a fishing rod. And 12 or 13 I wasn't interested in making a paycheck then. But the clamming came in much later than that, the heavy duty clamming that we have right now. I'm married, I have two children, one three, one seven weeks old, own a house in a very expensive town of Chatham. And my income is 95% from Monomoy Island. And I've really never held a job besides shellfishing, paycheck wise. Everything is on the line for me right now. When I go shellfishing on Monomoy, I have two boats. Uh, I would say 75% of the time I take the 18-foot aluminum boat because it draws less water, it burns less fuel, it's easier to maneuver, and we're talking about an area where the whole area goes 
dry at low tide, so you can come and go a lot easier with a boat that draws no water. Not talking a lot of sophistication here. Most of the catch these days comes from the common flat on the island's western edge. The common flat was inundated by sand when, in February of 1978, Monomoy was split in two by a ferocious winter storm. There was tremendous loss to the resident shellfish, but in time the area stabilized and developed into an ideal clam flat. This cycle of change defines Monomoy to such an extent that to a shell fisherman, flexibility is everything. If shell fishing on Monomoy ended, then you know, the town would definitely, within, I'd say, two years, somehow shut down the shellfish industry. It would be a slow death. I try not to think of that, to tell you the truth. I mean, there is the, the fin fish industry, but the way that is right now, I mean, that's not a guaranteed source of money. It wouldn't support the people that are doing it now, so. Your whole lifestyle would change. You know, the, the new truck would be gone, the used truck would come in. Life would not be the same. I think you'd see half of the clamors quit right off the top, whether they left town or went into some other business, but and you would see other half would be scrounging to try to make a living. And he would be looking three miles away at what used to be. Like I said before, I haven't thought about it. I don't dare think about it. So my future is on the line right now, yes. I mean, you could, you know, you can go landscaping. Anybody can make a certain amount, a certain amount of dollars per hour. But you know, a self-employed businessman is definitely the way to go. I've been shell fishing probably about seven years on and off. Uh, the last three or so have been full time. I thought it would be a wonderful summer job. I was in college at the time. And from there, it just snowballed. It, I really love it, and it's a part of my lifestyle now. I think it is a very empowering thing, really, for a woman to be out there among so many men, and a lot of them are competing. I usually go with my husband, my brother-in-law, and on occasion, their father. So it's kind of a family affair. We own a house here, and the real estate market's quite inflated since it's a summer type economy, tourist driven. I believe that if we were prohibited from shell fishing on Monomoy, we'd have to relocate. With it being 100% of our income, um, it would be very difficult adjustment. And what I've seen inshore and on South Beach, I just don't think we could make up for it there. It appeals to me on so many levels. Uh, being out there, the commute out is better than driving into Boston for a job. There's something about being out on Monomoy, looking around, the, you cannot beat the scenery. It definitely beats sitting at an office desk. The actual act of harvesting shellfish, it's so primitive. You're outside, you have a rake in your hand and a wire basket, and that's the extent of it. 
but that is, that's it in a pair of rubber gloves. It's no more, it doesn't have any more of an in impact than a child building a sandcastle. It's, uh, it's primitive. Most of the many people who clam at Monomoy are full-time, working year-round. Some, however, see it as a summer job. Some are part-time, filling in and supplementing other incomes. And to some, it serves as an alternative to the unemployment line. But no matter who they are, they all have a stake in flats as productive as Monomoy. Well, I first started clamming when I was very young with my parents, but commercially, uh, I believe it's 12 years old when you can first get your license. I graduated in 97. At least 10 or 15 kids in the class had permits out of 40, 50 kids. Right now, I'm uh, attending the University of Miami. It's um, my last year there. I graduate in May. I paid all my college tuition through clamming. I have a goal at the beginning of the summer. I got to make my tuition money. I go every single day until I have that tuition money. And next year, I hope to take the year off. I'm going to clam, earn some money, and go to law school. If it closed tomorrow, it affects me going to school. I wouldn't be able to go to law school. My best day digging last summer was like 525 pounds, $1,200 days. I couldn't think of another job that I could possibly make as much money to achieve my goals. It's nice to get up early in the morning, go out to the flat. You see some amazing things out there. Like, I remember several times you see the deer, you know, up in the dunes and stuff. I mean, I've been in school for, you know, this whole semester. And when I came back, the first thing I did was go clamming. <laughs> Two days home and I went clamming. It's a great learning experience. I think I kept myself out of trouble growing up through the clam flat, learning I learned, you know, how to respect people, you learned self-discipline, you learn how to manage money, manage your time. I hope high school kids, you know, in years to come are going to be able to do the same thing. The bulk of Chatham shell fishery occurs at Monomoy. However, many people shell fish in other areas in town, and they too fear the impact of a closure on Monomoy and the subsequent overcrowding of the inshore areas. That's right, I'm mostly a quag. I very seldom dig steamers. I've been living here since about 1957. There, there are a lot of people that fish all the estuaries in, in the town of Chatham, the inshore, not that don't go to Monomoy. If Monomoy is closed or curtailed at all, it would affect me. It will absolutely saturate the inshore waters. I mean, you know, It'd just be so crowded around here. I think a lot of people would just get out of the business. That's what I think. They'd have to find something else to do. There's no way I could, you know, at my age that I could get a job working for a contractor, like eight hours a day. It'd probably be too much for me. Uh, I couldn't replace the income that I make part-time. There's no way about that. I don't n really know what I would do now, you know? I'm partly retired. I'll be 70 years old. Basically, I would live on less. I would have to find something to replace the income, but also, it's something I love to do, and I wouldn't be able to do that anymore. And it will just ruin a way of life. It makes me very sad. We come in by water, and we leave by water. We never encroach above high tide line. I just talked to a buyer yesterday. He says, you know why the price is up so high? Is you guys are the only ones bringing product in right now. In that wintertime area where there's like a layoff of all shell fishermen from November through February, March, we can keep the stocks up in the uh, shucking houses. And they are always guaranteed that we have fresh, fresh product that's really clean and no pollution. Monomoy is a great boost. It's just enough out in the ocean. It's close enough to the Gulf Stream where it's warm enough to keep the temperature just right. By what I've seen over the years, which would be a scientific process because we've been observing since, since we've been digging, 
if we weren't there moving the bottom, continually farming it, so to speak, it would go stagnant. The waste of their own chokes them to a point where they don't even reset. There's not enough oxygen. It's not aerated. A high density on a flat can pretty much choke, choke a flat right out. It seems like the more we fluff up the bottom, the better it comes back. Human impact is part of the food chain there. Birds would stop nesting in that area because their food wouldn't be there. The town of Chatham employs a full-time constable to oversee the shellfish resource in town waters and to enforce laws that regulate the taking of shellfish. The regulation on Monomoy hinges on the fact that the flats are so densely populated that they require constant thinning. Well, my job is, is to monitor the resource. When I need information, uh, the first, the first people I go to are the shell fishermen. Uh, they tell me what's where and, and the relative health of the resource and everything, and just by, just by watching how they're doing and where they're going, I, I can tell what's going on at a certain place at a certain time. The shell fishermen are somewhat self-pleasing. They, they keep track of, of various areas and relative abundances in, in various places. If a, if a shellfish flat has, has seeded in with, with clams, but the clams are too small to take, the shell fishermen will, will leave that flat alone. They might keep an eye on it to see how, how quickly the clams are growing, but they won't go and dig there until those clams are ready to be harvested, they're harvestable size. They won't even try to, to pick the big ones out of the little ones. It's, it's, it's not worth their time and effort. Monomoy is a great habitat, probably an ideal habitat for soft shell clams. They grow there very quickly, they set in great abundance, and these are characteristics that aren't really duplicated anywhere else. Uh, in the last few years, we've had tremendous sets of soft shell clams on Monomoy. It's resulted in, in uh, literally millions of dollars worth of shellfish coming out of this one area. It's conceivable that you could have a, a clam on the table at a restaurant in, in Chatham that had been in the bottom on Monomoy uh, six hours prior to when it was being served. It certainly is a, a guaranteed fresh product. I've owned uh, the square with a partner, George Payne, for 34 years. We feature shellfish and fish from the from the area of Chatham, as much as we can get. I mean, I prefer more and more steamers. I think they, most people like steamers better than they like lobsters. I mean, it's like everybody likes lobster that you know that comes here. They love it, you know. But the thing is, they always want the steamers. There's a lot of those people. You know, they just want those little white clams. You, know? you can't keep them in the house. They, as soon as they come in, they go out. I can't believe that uh, we sell almost nine tons of steamers a year. 11,000 servings. We paid um, over $35,000 to several people that we buy from. And that kind of money is, is uh, keeping the community going. It's something that um, we couldn't do without because our customers would be annoyed. And being in the, the service business, that's what we do. We keep our customers happy. And one of the things that's so easy to get and so plentiful is Monomoy steamers. And they ask them when they know it's from Monomoy, they know the name. Otherwise, they want those little white guys that you know are so sweet and they look forward to coming to Chatham, Cape Cod to get them. and put a half inch of water in the pan and touch them. It's a wonderful thing that we're surrounded with because it's probably one of the simplest things on the menu. I mean, if you have, I mean, <laughs> there's no secrets. It's Mother Nature at its best.
Like the Squire restaurant, there are many businesses here that depend, directly or indirectly, on Monomoy shellfishing. To them, this dependence is undeniable. It breaks down to real dollars and real people. Shellfishing do a lot of business here. It's what we're geared uh, towards, it's what we know, it's what we enjoy, it's what we do. So I was looking at some things, uh, different sales of uh, gloves, baskets, rakes, foul weather, things like that to, to the shellfish, uh, shell fishermen of this town. If that was to disappear, I would lose, I'd have to, I'd have to lay off somebody. That would be a 20% reduction in our sales force. That would be a family that's, that's out of work. We depend heavily on the, on the Chatham shell fishermen. The fellows that are in the other fisheries, especially, especially the cod fishery, which is, is highly regulated, there's, there's closures, there's days on, there's days off. You see a lot of those guys, and they've been in the business a long time. When they're shut down, they're grabbing the clam rake and going to Monomoy. Yeah, they may, you know, 30, 40 year old guys, but they're gonna grab that clam rake and go to work because they have a family to feed, they have payments to make, they get mortgages. And they'll hold on to that license, they'll hold on to that rake because it means a lot. They don't want to give that up. It's a, it's a major backup for them. Uh, there's, there's plenty of guys do it full time year round, but it's a big backup uh, for a lot of people. And so the shell fishermen of Monomoy, men and women, young and old, continue this way of life. Without shell fishing here, on Monomoy, on the ancestral flats that they so actively steward, the Chatham and Monomoy that exist today would cease to be, would be lesser places, lesser places not only for the people, but for the wildlife who also follow the cycle of her tide, who also have their lives on the line. If you ever get to go there, you'll understand why we uh, like to work there. It's like working in paradise. I have a goal at the beginning of the summer, I gotta make my tuition money. I go every single day until I have that tuition money. If it closed tomorrow, it affects me going to school, I wouldn't be able to go to law school. Basically, I would live on less, and it, it will just ruin a way of life. It makes me very sad. So many people depend on Monomoy for their living. It would be a, a, a terrible loss would alter the nature of the whole shellfish industry in town. The trickle-down effect, I don't even want to think about it. I believe that if we were prohibited from shellfishing on Monument Way, we'd have to relocate. But it, it could come to that, where we'll move on. It's, it's kind of hard to, to take a Cape Codder away from where he grows up, though. I believe that if we were prohibited from shellfishing on Monum Way, we would be in danger of losing a sustainable fishery, period. It would be a slow death, and he would be looking three miles away at what used to be. 